y'all, and welcome to Skyrim Scripting. On this episode, I'm going to show you how you can use the reload script command to make it so much easier for you to make changes to your scripts and run them without even changing Skyrim. So you can make a change and run it in Skyrim, make a change and run it in Skyrim without exiting and restarting Skyrim. So let's get started. As always, I'm going to make a mod. And uh, I'll do what I did last time. I will just make it, uh, um, I don't know, uh, let's call it my mod. Uh, I'll make it do something when the quest starts, and I'll make it do something when, um, I don't know, when um, you cast a spell. My mod, creation kit, my mod, boot up creation kit. And again, I'm using Mod Organizer 2. You can check out the second episode in this playlist to describe kind of why I do that and how I do that. I'm going to save. I'm going to call it my mod. And uh, let's make a spell that will trigger our script because that's really nice and convenient. So I'm just going to magic effect. I'm going to make the effect first, which is what we attach the script to. Uh, my mod effect. Uh, my mod effect is a name. Uh, make it uh, fire and forget and give it a magic skill otherwise the player can't cast it we'll hit ok open it back up so that we can add a script mm -mm 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 -mm. add a new script and call it my mod effect script cool 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 we're done with that let's make a spell new my mod spell we just call it my mod spell. Make it fire and forget. Go into effects, right click a new. We did this in our previous episode where we uh, showed you how to run a script whenever you cast a spell. Here's my mod effect. Uh, it might be a long list if you have all of Skyrim loaded up. Just find it in that list and hit OK. And now let's make a quest. We'll call it my mod quest. And. Um, Let's just hit OK, reopen up that quest, go to the scripts, and add a script, new script. I'm going to call this my mod quest script. And um, the one thing I'm going to do really quickly, first I'll save, and then I'll uh, go back and edit the source of this script. Uh, here's what it says right now. Make this bigger for you. Here's what it says right now. Um, I'm going to give the script, like we did last time, just a connection to the spell so that uh, we, we have the spell and we can do something like add it to the player. Um, so we'll do, uh, we'll do this, um, spell property my mod spell auto and uh, just uh, hit control S in that little edit source box right here. Just add that, hit Control S, it should compile, close out of that, and now you can go to properties on that and hit autofill all, and it should autofill one of those properties. And uh, hit OK, hit OK, and uh, you can do the rest of what I'm going to do in this episode in the um, uh, our mod, mod, whatever we call this, in the edit source boxes, but I'm going to switch on over to Visual Studio Code so I can give you some pretty, pretty colors in the text, in the source script. And I'm back. So um, the Visual Studio Code, I can see those scripts that we made for the mod effect and for the quest right here. So here they are, nice and colorful and pretty. Um, let's just do what we did last time and uh, give the player the spell and automatically put it in both of their hands so we'll just say um, uh, event on init and event and inside of that event we're going to do what we've done in the past uh, few episodes um, I'm just going to say in, in this case I'm going to put the player into a variable called actor game dot get Player. Uh, so if you've got this in your little edit source box or however you're editing your source code, um, now you have a variable named player which uh, is a reference to the player in the game. And you put actor in front of it because you have to put the type of thing and get player 
returns this thing called an actor, returns the player actor. Uh, so now we can use that player to give them the spell. So we just say player.addSpell, and we put in that my mod spell property that we have above right here. And that's how we do it. We give it this spell. And now I'm going to put it in both of their hands. So I'll say player equip spell. And just like last time, you give it a spell, and then you give it a, either the number is 0 or 1 for which hand you want to put it in. So we'll do my mod spell, and we'll put it in both of their hands. So this is the code that we have. And um, I just want to uh, uh, do a debug dot message box and say, um, hello, you loaded the mod. Something that we can make a change to. Uh, now, so far I haven't showed you where I'm finding out that game.getPlayer and player.addSpell and EquipSpell exist. I have this wonderful setup with Visual Studio Code, but how do you know in that little edit source box what to type? How do you find out about this stuff? Well, you go to creationkit.com, and we'll head there right now for you. So we go to creationkit.com. You're going to want to click on the left for Skyrim, not the right for Fallout. And then what you want as a scripter now, you want to go to the scripting reference. Uh, this has all kinds of great documentation for beginners. It's got tutorials, some basic tutorials to get you up and running, kind of like what we're running through now. So if you prefer video screencasts, that's probably why you're here. So you can do things like scroll down, and one of my favorite links here is called Events. Uh, you can click. I'm going to open this up in a new tab. And it shows you things like uh, uh, on effect Start, which we used last time. Uh, this is how you would know that on effect Start takes these two parameters, and it'll describe what the parameters are. Um, but you can also go to things like, um, I'm going to search this page for um, message box. Okay, and this is where message box is. And here's how it what it is, here's how to uh, call it, and there's a number of things you can say debug dot blah, and uh, you can click this member of debug script, you can click into debug here, and here's the full list of things that you can you can do uh, on that debug dot. You can uh, debug dot and teleport the player to a specified cell if you want. Um, that'd be cool. Maybe we'll update our script so that uh, first it'll just say hello when you cast the spell, but then it'll like send them to Riften. I don't know. And then there's that game.getPlayer. Well, here's debug script, right? So let's actually just, uh, we'll either search for game script, or back on this main scripting reference page, just look for like get player. And you'll find that it's on the game. And uh, here's the game script, and you can see everything that's on game. You can add perk points to the player. You can enable or disable fast travel. You can um, fast travel to a destination. You can find the closest reference to certain objects, which is super useful. You can like find the nearest um, consumable in a, if it could be in a crate or something or like on a table, I don't know if it works through crates. Um, you can even get the position of the sun, whatever, all kinds of stuff. Now, if you have something like Visual Studio Code set up, or I believe you can do this with Notepad++, um, other things, you can find it here on the, uh, uh, on the scripting reference. There's a editor setup here, external text editors. Um, now, I don't know why Visual Studio Code isn't here, I kind of should probably volunteer to write that page um, because I love Visual Studio Code and I personally believe that the Visual Studio Code in 2021 setup is uh, more advanced and uh, easier to use than any of these. Um, that's my personal experience, but a lot of folks love using Notepad++ or Sublime or Atom or all these other things for the game. So uh, here's how you could set up an external text editor and it has instructions on those pages. So for me, uh, I just type, and you could get this in Notepad++. I don't know if it works quite as well. Um, you know, just I just type player, 
dot and it shows me all the stuff I can do on a player. So this is how I learn a lot of things. Um, instead of going to uh, like a, I don't know what get gold value would do on a player. I don't think it probably works, but I can apparently find out if they're flying. So that's how I, I find out that things exist. And from Visual Studio Code, I can control shift B to compile, but you will just control S in the edit source box. And now let's, uh, let's make the a magical effect to do something, maybe. Maybe. Let's make it do something later. Let's see if we can make it do something while the game is still running. Okay? Let's run this let's run the game. Ooh, I forgot to turn on the mod. Uh check my mod. If you're not using mod organizer 2, you don't need to do that. Um the mod should already be set up. Uh, if the mod doesn't run, then you go to mods, and uh, I showed you how to do that in one of the previous episodes. We're going to COC Riverwood. I'm looking for recommendations on different cells to teleport to. So here's hello, you loaded the mod, and it says my mod spell uh, added, and we can just try and cast this, and it doesn't do anything because we didn't tell it to do anything. Let's go to, back to our code. Um, you could just, uh, if you're not using Mod Organizer 2, you can keep Creation Kit open while you're doing this stuff. So keep Creation Kit open and keep Skyrim open. And then back in Creation Kit, you can right click on the uh, magic effect that we opened up, uh, script, edit source. And let's put some stuff in here. Um, event on effect start. We did that in the previous episode, and again, you could always find it here on creationkit.com. You can always search for something like um, uh, active magic effect, because that's what this thing extends. Um, but even when we searched that on effect start was one of the first things that comes up. And you could always just copy and paste this in, or usually they show some examples, and you can copy and paste those things in. So on effect start it takes actor, target, actor, caster. We don't necessarily need either of those. Let's debug dot message box. Hello there. And hit control S to save in my case uh, and compile. In my case, I'm hitting a different keyboard shortcut to compile it. And now note that this thing is called my mod effect script. So note whatever you call the script. And now let's go back in game. Here we are in game. And I'm going to tilde, take the console, open up the console, and I'm going to type reload script. I can spell it. Reload script, all one word, space, my mod effect script. Enter. Now I'm going to cast the spell. Hello there. Go, go back to creation kit. Uh, change this to something else. Changed it. Jalesta save and compile. For me, I'm hitting a different keyboard shortcut, which I'll compile. Go back. Now try casting the spell. It still says hello there. It's going to keep saying hello there. Open up the console. And now, uh, to do this really quickly, just hit the up arrow. And it'll put your uh, previous command in there. Um, if you've done other things in the console, then just keep hitting up and it'll go through your history. And it's an easy way to get back to your reload script command. And just hit enter cast a spell. Ta-da! Uh, now, if we were to system quit to main menu and go back into um, Riverwood, the hello you loaded the mod, uh, that stays the same. We haven't changed that. Um, but this, the spell is already ready. The spell is already ready. So if we go back and we... Um, Go to our quest script over here, and instead of hello you loaded the mod, we'll say uh, we change this, hooray, save, and then uh, so control S to save and compile. I'm going to hit the different keyboard shortcut to build in Visual Studio Code. Uh, and now go back to the main menu, quit main menu, we'll see OC Riverwood again. Oh, I told you I'd make it teleport. going to give you that same previous message, message, hello, you loaded the mod. 
because we haven't reloaded the uh, my mod quest script. Now, if you uh, go over here, uh, you can keep hitting up even though we loaded a different game, uh, so long as uh, all of the history will stay in the console until you quit and reopen up the game. So we're going to reload script my my quest script. Now you can probably guess what will happen if we go back to the main menu. And this is a way that you can change scripts that do something on init. Um, and we change this. Hooray! 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 Wonderful. So um, I kind of think kind of think that's it. Uh, it took about 15 minutes. Uh, I want to keep these kind of short and sweet and to the point, so I'm going to be using reload script, reload script a lot throughout the series, so um, now you'll, uh, you'll not be surprised and wonder what it is. So you'll get to see it used a lot more, and uh, so we'll practice it. But uh, that's reload script. You don't have to exit the game. It's awesome, right? Sweet. So thank you, peace, and as always, Happy modding. Thank you, everyone.